What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we are out at the Wheatfield Valley Golf Course in Williamston, Michigan, about 15 minutes east of East Lansing, about 15 minutes east of Forest Acres. This course is definitely not as tough as Forest Acres, just a 67.4 rating, 120 slope. One of the easier courses we've seen on the channel. And yeah, um, that's what I, I got to tell you, I'm sorry you guys didn't get any October golf this year. Uh, it just kind of happened that way. I uh, didn't really... Uh, I, I played okay, but I had a lot of stuff going on. A lot of my rounds were tournament rounds. The uh, Jones Cup qualifier where the top five go to the university championship every tough. year for Ferris... I played in that. That was the first weekend that of October. Is tough. And um, I shot 86, 82, 168 total. Again, from the black tees. Definitely not as good as my Ryder Cup qualifier campaign. I finished in like 16th or 17th or something like that. Um, still top half. Still a respectable tournament showing for me this year. And if you guys remember, it's because my wedges were on point. The entire day. That is what we like to on call that a tournament that you guys to saw. Start off the day, picking it right back up here. Stolen away, in front of the Damn. <laughs> that right is how we're supposed Tyler to do it. Puts it away. Let's and go. Has a one nothing lead. Ten nice. seconds into the nice. game. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Well, if that's not an ideal start, a tap-in stress-free birdie, I don't know what is. I know it's on a pretty short par 5. It was only about 470. Yeah, this is a pretty short course. It's only 5,800 yards from these blue tees out here today. There's no tees actually out. Like I said, you know, really late season, only the uh, whites and the reds were out. Um, but, you know, it was fine because... On each of the tee boxes, they had uh, a plaque where it uh, depicted uh, the blue yardage, and there were different colors. There was oh, no, blue writing for the blue yardages, wow, white for the rolling. white yardages, and so on. So it was fine. I still well, knew where to hit from, so it wasn't a big deal. But definitely a big jump from having hardly any trees even changing colors yet with all the leaves on to now just basically everything is dormant and everything is dead it's good yeah. Big game. apparently what's still alive and well is my excellent mid-range putting I that like i have worked on so like much in this past That's year all I can tell you. <laughs> and it's it's awesome we're one under through two holes. How often does that happen? Last time I think that happened was Eagle Glen, the um, front nine. I believe that was course vlog 81. Remember, I birdied the first hole, and I'm pretty sure I parred the second hole as well. Uh, but That's just a dream start for us here, guys. And uh, a very tolerable tee shot on this third hole, too. We're about to head into a decently tough two hole stretch i would say holes three and four are definitely two of the three hardest holes on the front nine the um third of those toughest holes being hole nine as you'll see in a little bit i'm still making it look easy apparently what is happening what is happening i'm playing so good holy crap Eight feet maximum. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. This green gets really narrow, too. That's an OB stake. Like, less than 40 feet from the pin. That is nuts. You're telling me this is a 120 slope course and it has that on it? Jeez. Well, not my problem because I didn't go over there. So there's that. So headed into this birdie putt now, really hoping to make another one. I mean, who knows? I just made one about this distance. So 
I'm feeling the best I ever have over a ball. I don't think I've ever been at any point in my golfing career, well, hard to call it a career, but you know what I mean. I don't think I've ever been two under at any point in any round ever. I don't think it's ever happened. Don't ever change your line, kids. So don't ever do that. Really, really good stuff. We're one guys. under, so that's fine. We are one under. I'm happy. I hope you guys are too to finally see me play better. I know it's not over yet, but I mean, it can only get so bad after a start like that. So, if you know what I'm saying. Like the Bucks run 82 when I was one under through three. Or no, was I? Yeah, I was. I think. I don't remember. I know I birdied the first hole. I don't think I was one under through three though. Cause I know I bogeyed two. I don't remember what happened on three. Either way, that I kind of I kind of fell off on that round. That 82 meant I went plus 11 on the final 17 holes. So yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, so off to this next hole. Hopefully no one honks at me. Then again, I'm kind of guarded. So in any, in any event, we're having a really good start. I think I've hit all three greens in reg. Yeah, I have. Those are the numbers we need. Uh, next one is 324, hitting out of the chute. Nice little interlude there for me to help drown out the freeway noise. Yeah, that's the one thing about this course I'm not a huge fan of. Again, courses have pretty hard control over. It's hard for courses to control that. Like, one of my favorite courses, the Emerald, is right next to the freeway. So, I mean, that's how a lot of public courses get their business, is folks on long trips. Speechless right now. Um, going through kind of dead areas, and that's honestly where you can find some hidden gems. And that's the case with the Emerald, and uh, to some extent here as well. I mean, while this isn't a premier golf course, while this isn't a place you'd normally travel to play from a super far distance, it's nice. It's not offensive at all. It's very welcoming to all people of the game. Uh, there's challenging holes, despite them being pretty short like this one. The green complexes have a decent amount of, of dimension to them. If you've got nothing else to do and you're looking for a golf course on the... Um, eastern edge of Lansing area I would go here again I would um I think uh at some point I might come back here to do like a, a video like a worse ball scramble or something and see if I can still break 80 because if I keep playing like this on even if I did that I might actually get it done um I've seen uh, a golf channel on YouTube by the name of Itching to Scratch Golf do that before. Um, I know Good Good and I know the big guy, the big names in the golf YouTube world have done it too, but the Itching to Scratch Golf one was the first one that I ever that did. And he was the kind of guy, the first guy to do it, it that I know of. Still and uh, it was a pretty interesting video and he actually shot, he only did it for nine holes, but he shot a 43 and he played quite well. Um, if you guys haven't heard of Itch and Scratch Golf, he's based out of uh, the Cleveland area, same uh, area as where Fat Guy Golf is from originally, which is uh, one of my biggest inspirations for starting this channel was Fat Guy Golf. And uh, while Fat Guy Golf, while John might not be a uh, very good golfer, I mean, he is kind of a mid-90s shooter. He basically started the channel because he wanted to document his journey with weight loss and document his journey with uh, just uh, getting better at the game and showcasing the courses around his area. And uh, he did a perfect job of that. And that's why I'm still subscribed to him and still watch him to this day. So if you're watching John Baker of Fat Guy Golf, you're awesome, man. And uh, 
Ben of Inch to Scratch Golf as well. You guys are a big reason why I've been doing this for so long and why I continue to do it and why even when things get tough, even when I hardly ever post, I uh, continue to come back to this channel. And rounds like this also just inspire me to keep going too. Like after a really bad dry spell, like in October, I didn't really have that many terrible rounds. The only time I failed to break 85 was uh, the first day of the Jones Cup qualifier, and that, and Cat Key is a 74.3 rating, 138 slope. So if there's any course where that's warranted, I'd say it's that one. But, um, you know, I had a lot of decent rounds in October. I, I shot a fair amount of 80s, a fair amount of 81s. There were a little bit more 82s, 83s, 84s than I wanted, but not an this offensive amount. Oh, no, no, this is dangerous. Okay. But there weren't these shots either. I'll give you that, too. What is this? I'll tell you what it is. It's the best golf you've ever seen me play on this channel. That's what it is. And like I was talking about in October, I didn't break 80 for 11 straight rounds heading into this round. And obviously it looks like I'm going to be able to do it today. And even there, normally you'd think that putt was for par, right? The one I just missed? No, it was for birdie. Yeah, that's how on we are today, guys. That's how well we're playing. I mean, I've hit every single green so far today. Like, I actually feel like a professional right now. I actually feel like a touring pro right now. And I know I'll probably never get to that level, but... If I'm going to be in the PGA management program at Ferris State, obviously I want the title of PGA professional to no, not just mean our first green of the day. I got the degree oh and got goodness. through the work experience. I want it to also mean the fact that, yeah, I am a scratch I didn't golfer think it was could no, I'm kidding. <laughs> as a professional in that regard. I feel like part of me kind of feels guilty when I tell people I'm doing that program because I feel like with where my game is at right now, I wouldn't be comfortable saying that I'm a professional because I don't want to pull the wool over people's eyes and make people think that I'm better than I actually am because I I know one of the worst things you can do is un, is overpromise and underdeliver and I feel like that's kind of the way I feel about my golf game sometimes obviously not today as you see here there's another dart even when I don't hit the green like I was saying announcer's curse almost there for me as I missed the very next green after I said that, but it doesn't even matter because I get it as close as I did, and there we go, seven. another par. Six straight pars after the birdie. We're still one under. We have a chance to go under par for the entire nine holes if we can par or better these next two holes. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I felt so good about myself as this round was happening. And I'm so glad I, I had it on video. I'm so glad I chose to bother to pull the camera out, even though I thought, ah, it's a pushover course. People yeah, aren't going to want to see me play okay. here. Well, let me tell you something about golf. It doesn't matter where you are. It's not a pushover. It's not. You know, like I, like I see um, not a scratch golfer who's vi based in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, his name's Adam. He's got about six... 60,000 subscribers, oh, and um, I remember one thing he says is there's no such thing as an easy golf course, and let me tell you something, he's right, and uh, something I need to remember a lot more often, That was as you see here on these kinds three, of shots. Three, four feet away from being really good. Well, it might not be really good, it at least popped out of the bunker, so I do have a chance to uh, get up and down here, if nothing else. And knowing me today, yeah, called it. Yeah, this is great. Get out of town. What a shot there. Looking like a potential bogey to almost not to get in for birdie. Just a flawless round of golf. I can't do anything wrong even if I tried, I feel like. It's, it's awesome. You know, these rounds don't happen very often, but when they do, it makes you a lot more grateful that you came back and stayed tough after that round where you hardly broke 90 
and just uh, coming back and making That's yourself go through it again, even when you're just feeling emotionally drained. It's really that simple. It really and then you get a round like this that happens, and it feels so good. I mean, this is part of the reason, I think, why so many golfers have been playing the game for so long. Is these rounds just keep coming back, and knowing that you have the possibility to accomplish it every single time you go out there. That needs to hold on right there. Yeah, that'll stay on. That's excellent. That is excellent announcer's name that I don't know. That is arguably the best tee shot of the day so far. I mean, what a clutch shot there on easily the toughest par four on this front nine. Only one over 400 yards. Out of bounds, not very far off the side of the fairway. As you see there, you can see the stakes to the right of me just across the cart path. And, uh, yeah, you've only got about 25, 30 feet of room from the edge of the fairway, which is not a lot. Um, so it was great to just hit that tee shot because uh, I had kind of a left to right wind to deal with, it. so any shade of a push was going to be I, somehow, death, and I was able to pull it off. So, somehow I've turned into an, a, a plus handicap today. I think I'm playing pretty close to a plus handicap so far. <laughs> Why didn't I do this when I was playing Michael Zanoni? Jeez. So, the lowest I've ever shot on nine holes is a 34 minus one at Farmington Hills Golf Club. You guys never saw it. That was the day I first broke 80 for the first time. And then I nearly choked it away with a 43 back. But, but, this is a par 34 front nine. Only one par five and three par threes. So I'm currently one under. I've had, I've birdied the first hole and I've parred every hole since. And I have two putts for my best ever nine hole score. That's what I have left. Two putts for a 33. I drain that, I get a 32. I would go absolutely bonkers. But uh, I've kept my head on straight today. I've kept it straight down the middle. I've hit a lot of fairways, hit a lot of greens. That's how you score, that's how you do it. I'm also inspired today by a guy by the name of Robert Garrigus. 46th birthday today. He is a PGA Tour pro. Uh, currently playing in the Bermuda Championship. He was tied for second after the first round. And if he were to win the tournament, I, I, I don't, I, he didn't do as well yesterday, but he's still like within a, within a few shots. You know, if he has a day like Thursday, he'll get back in the mix at the Bermuda Championship going on right now. Um, but uh, he's kind of a tour journeyman, kind of a, a blue collar guy who, um, went through a lot of hard times when he was my age. And um, I just wanna say, Robert Garrigus, if you're watching this right now, this is for you, man. Happy belated birthday, as soon as you'll see this, but uh, yeah, you're playing great out there in the Bermuda. It'd be his first win in 13 years. If he were to win, he was only won once ever on the PGA. He's had six runner up finishes though. So he's like a really good golfer and almost nobody knows about. So something about it, man, something about it, something about today, the specific date. It just speaks to me, man. And, um, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all I can say. This has been, this has been a dream day so far. Let's keep it going. So here it is. Eight and three quarters holes of brilliant, nearly flawless golf. After 11 straight rounds of not breaking 80, and then you break through like this. It's amazing. It feels so good. It'll be good enough. The green jacket is going north of the border. Mike Greer.
finally have one that is under par. It took me long enough, but I finally did it, and I made it clutch par on that last hole, which is stroke hole two on the course. Unbelievable. Three out of six fairways, seven out of nine greens, no penalties, no three putts. Textbook round of golf for me right there, guys. I know it's only on a 2,700-yard par 34, and as you see here, pulling up the USGA Golf Handicap Index app, the blue front nine at Wheatfield is a 32.7 rating. So no, unfortunately, it was not a a minus hand or a plus handicap performance. I was off by 0.3, but uh, number I do have another chance to do it on the back. Number one and uh, number two, if uh, I can keep up the stats of hitting seven out of nine greens and not getting any three putts. It doesn't matter where you're playing. You are going to have a chance to break par if you do that on nine holes. It's just a fact. It just is. But uh, the back nine here at Wheatfield is a full two strokes harder as far as uh, the stroke rating goes and 14 slope points higher. So I'm definitely not out of the woods yet. And knowing me, I mean, I don't think I can screw up so much as to not break 80, but... Uh, at some point, the nerves are going to set in just knowing what I have the chance to accomplish. And uh, when I was going through this round, I was feeling them. Trust me, on that back nine, I was feeling the pressure. We need a 40 or better on the back nine to get our personal best score for 18 holes ever. I've shot 74 three times in my life. One of them, or actually two of them were on video, the first was the Southern Swing Invitational Tournament at Twin Lakes in high school, my first of two rounds of the 36-hole event. Uh, second was Pontiac Country Club. Third was Beacon Hill. And uh, both of those were in 2022. So, man, it's been a long time since I've been in a position like this. I've had, I believe, three 75s up to this point in the year. So, trust me, I was feeling it. I was feeling the pressure. It's not over, and that's not a good it's not over to be saying. But if I can keep playing like this, I am going to be fine. Trust me on that. All right, guys. Well, it was a pleasure making this video, putting it together. I'm so glad that um, you guys are finally seeing some great golf out of me. Uh, you're probably going to get to see the back nine of this vlog very, very soon, potentially as early as tomorrow night, because tomorrow I'm going to be driving for about, and I'm not, I'm not driving, obviously I'll be riding along, but I'm going to be in the car for over 12 hours tomorrow. I'm waking up at 6am, getting on the road and I'm getting to where I'm going at about 6.30, 7pm. Um, I'm going to South Carolina for the 2024 spring break, and uh, trust me, I will be filming some videos, and I did need to get some videos off my phone in preparation for the trip, so I am going to just go ham on this vlog tomorrow for this back nine. I'm probably going to get the entire thing done on the way down, so expect to see another upload extremely soon most likely tomorrow night. And if not tomorrow night, then very, very early first thing Monday morning. So it's awesome to finally see me play some great golf. I actually got a comment and I'll make sure this is the last thing because I know I'm going a bit over my time here. Uh, I got a comment from some guy on YouTube. I don't know his username, but I saw he commented on my Pipestone video, my course vlog number 17, where I shot a 45. I did Granted, to his comment, did not play very well, but he said, dude, you're terrible. Well, I mean, I, I guess I see where he's coming from on that, but I don't know. That was kind of insensitive. Not that I'm going to take his comment down because I'm not a P word, but, um, you know, I mean, all I'm going to do when I comment back on him, once I have this video uploaded momentarily, is I'm just going to give him a link to this video, and I'll be like, really? You want to think again? So, I mean, this is funny how, how that timing works out here with, with some of the stuff that I do. It's just serendipitous. 
All right, guys, this is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.